Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to uh, thank the ranking member also. Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition to this amendment. While the threat of uh, ISIL is beyond anything we have seen in the last 13 years since the horrors of 9-11, while we've seen that there are no limits to ISIL's gross brutality, they are a terrorist threat to the region, to the United States, and to our allies. This rushed amendment to arm, train, vetted, the vetted Syrian rebels is not the answer. This chamber needs to have an informed, robust discussion and debate about the U.S. role in combating and dealing with ISIL and other extremists in Syria and Iraq. It's a debate that should take place on its own. This issue and this amendment should not be attached to the continued resolution or any other matter before the House. This amendment authorizes the training and equipment of vetted Syrian opposition forces, but we are still unclear on who these forces are, how will these rebel groups be chosen and vetted? How do we ensure that our weapons, training, and knowledge won't be used by ISIL or other terrorist organizations in the future? Additionally, this amendment only highlights a piece of the President's plan for addressing ISIL, a plan that includes significant long-term bombing campaigns and military escalation in Iraq and Syria. If the House leaves for the next eight weeks without addressing the already expanding scope of U.S. military operations in Iraq and Syria, I fear that we will return in November to find the U.S. sliding down the slippery slope towards full military engagement in those countries. We have, we have been there before. We've seen before how mission creep can expand a limited mission into a full-blown U.S. armed response. I will not let this happen and let this country be dragged into another conflict once again without an informed discussion. Congress needs to debate a new authorization for the use of military force before any expansion of military operations. I support the President's call to dismantle ISIL through robust regional and international partnerships, support for local capacities on the ground, and expanded humanitarian assistance. Arming and training Syrians and Iraqis, and perhaps eventually supporting them with airstrikes, may push back ISIL's gains, but it will not defeat extremism. There is no lasting military solution to extremism. The only lasting solution is a political solution, one in which the rights and concerns of all religious and cultural groups are respected. The U.S. must focus on building partnerships in the region and around the world to encourage moderate Sunni groups in Iraq and in Syria to move away from ISIL and towards an alternative and inclusive future. We also need to have a plan for the development of this region beyond our conf confrontation with ISIL. I have a deep reservations and important lingering questions that need to be debated on this floor. I am concerned about exposing our soldiers once again to a protracted conflict with unclear objectives and no clear exit strategy. I cannot support this rushed amendment. Gentleman's time is expired. An additional minute. Thank Gentleman you. is recognized for an additional minute. Thank you. I appreciate that. I cannot support this rushed amendment and allow the U.S. to wade back into another conflict without a serious informed discussion of the United States military role in combating ISIL. We need to fully debate and discuss actions we as a nation take against this vicious foe. And I thank you on